Hi, this is Lisa Crosby, and in this video, I'm going to take you through the concept of environments in Power Platform. This affects uh, Dynamics 365, Power Apps, Power Automate, uh, Power Virtual Agents. So let me give you a demo here of what this is all about. First up, the most important thing to understand is that environments are how we contain the stuff that we build. Very technical term there, stuff, but they are a key um, way of compartmentalizing the assets that we build in Power Platform and a key way of managing the security and permissions of the users. Environments can be used for different purposes. They can either be used in a traditional application lifecycle type of situation with development test production environments, but you might also have environments for other reasons as well and, and multiple series of development test production environments. So you might have environments that are for specific uh, departments or specific areas of your organization that have different needs around, for instance, the connectors they can use or different security and permissions with the users that can be in there. So let me show you here in uh, my Power Platform make a portal what's going on this is where you will find the environments always up in the top right there so i'll switch across to power automate it sits in the same spot there so if you ever need to switch across into a different environment that is where you'll find it and you'll usually find that it starts when you first log in it will start with this thing called the default environment now default environment has some very special properties and let's get this one out of the way first because this is one that a lot of people have questions about Firstly, it's there, you need it, you can't delete it. <laughs> it's actually essential to the connection between Power Platform and the Microsoft 365 tools. So if you're using apps with SharePoint and um, other tools in the platform there, that's where all of that is um, connected up together. So you can't get rid of it. The other thing that happens is that every user who is added is automatically added as a maker in that environment, which means they can make apps in the default environment and no, you can't stop them from doing that. So some best practices here around the default environment, it should be used for personal productivity type things. So this is really where you want to encourage your users. They're all in there. You can't stop them from being there. They can make their apps and flows in there. But this is a great place for them to be doing productivity types type of apps, things that use those Microsoft 365 tools. And also, um, you know, have a look at your data loss prevention policies, have a look at the connectors that you're allowing people to use and really restrict that down so that really you're just working with those productivity tools there so that people aren't creating production apps. You don't have as much control over the security and permissions there. You don't have as much database storage there. So do not use the default environment for your production apps that are going to be business critical for you uh, but it is a great place for personal productivity so that's what you see there let me show you what we recommend which is to rename that to be personal productivity or team productivity or something like that so what you need to do in another browser tab use this short link aka.ms forward slash PPAC, which is short for Power Platform Admin Center. And that will take you here to admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com, which is the full URL. And you will see you've got your environments here. I'm going to click here to the default environment, which is pretty much how it's named. It's named as your organization brackets default. You'll see here you can click edit and give it a new name. So we're just going to call this personal productivity. Now, obviously, you have to be an admin to do this. I'm working in a tenant here where I'm the admin, so this is really for admins to do this stuff. And that takes a couple of minutes in the background, and you're all good. So if I switch back over here now, you'll see over the course of running this demo when I refresh the screen that that will change. Just a really key thing to look out for is that every time you open a new tab or a new window or whatever to work with Power Apps or Power Automate, often it will be in the default environment. So if you're working on things in other environments, just always check in the top right that you're in the right place. Because this is a key um, container around the security and the assets that you build, everything you're building, if you're building apps, flows, um, you know, 
any other kinds of assets and things in there live in an environment and they won't talk to the other stuff. So if you're trying to build out a flow and connect it to a data table in one environment, but you've gone into flow and you're in the wrong environment, you'll find there's a wall there and you can't do it. So if you find that as you're building things that you can't find bits, that's, um, there we go, it's just changed to personal productivity as we go. So if you're finding that you can't uh, find things there and they're not, they're not in the right place, just check that you're in the right environment there. So within this environment, personal productivity, just to sort of give you a sense of what I mean about assets, if I go into solutions here, which is typically how we bundle up our assets that we build in Power Platform, you'll see I've got Fabricam project management, some stuff about approvals, default solutions, all of this is pretty standard stuff except this project management one here. Let's go back to home and I'm going to switch over. So this gives you an example here of some different things. We've got a development test, user acceptance testing and production environment. Let me switch across into the production environment and we'll go into here and have a look at our solutions and you'll see there's some different things here. So that Fabricam one that was available there isn't here and the weather one and so on is, is different again. I've also got a Power Platform Center of Excellence, which is a tool set I highly recommend you check out. Incidentally, that's a free toolkit um, that allows you to manage your Power Platform. Um, heaps of great stuff there. Let's go into solutions here and we'll see a bunch of other stuff in here. We've got um, the center of excellence, nurture components and some various other things there. So all of the assets that we're building live in that environment. Typically with your application lifecycle, you'd have them in a development environment and move them across to test and production and so on. Um, and then you have user permissions that you're controlling with each environment. So in a typical organization, you'd have all your users in the production environment with permission to do what they're allowed to there, but only a very select group of people in the, the test environment to help with user acceptance testing or other kinds of testing. So what I'm looking at here is like a full admin view, but if you're a user, chances are you might only see the default environment and a production environment. Another example here is that we've got one here called device ordering development. So this could be something perhaps you, you might want to set up an environment for a proof of concept of something. Um, I referred earlier to data loss prevention policies. So you can set your connectors by environment as well. So you might, for instance, want to have a different set of environments for, say, a marketing team where something like social media connectors like Twitter and so on are a legitimate business use case and you don't want the rest of the organization to do that. So you can have different environments for different purposes, as well as uh, in that development uh, test production type of scenario. To create a new environment, we go into Power Platform Admin Center where I was before, and there's this just plus new button. Now again, a couple of things here, you need to obviously have the right security role and so on to be able to do that. Not everyone can create an environment. We give the environment a name and we can choose one of these things. So a trial environment is a 30 day trial. You can only have one of those per user. Sandbox environment is a full environment or a production environment. And the difference between sandbox and production is that sandbox includes some extra functions in there, like the ability to copy and reset. Uh, so you definitely don't want that going on in your production environment. You can convert a sandbox environment to a production environment or vice versa. Uh, so that's the difference between those two. When you create an environment, it is then tied to a specific geo as well. So you'll see here that the region is Australia. That's where my tenant is, but you can choose a different one. So that's the default, but I could go in and create a, an environment in the United States here. So if you're working in a multi-geo organization and you want to have environments across the different geos you work in, you can do that as well. Even if your original tenant is in one of those and, and not everywhere, you can have that set up as well. We've also got a concept of a developer environment. So if I just switch across here and show you this, this one, it says Alex Hunter's environment. I've got a video here on how this works. It's also known as the community plan. And this is to enable an individual to sign up for a developer environment to, to learn and test and so on. It has a scope of one user is the most important thing there. So you cannot use that as a production environment or share apps with other people. But if individuals want to have a, a non-expired individual use trial, then the developer environment is certainly a very good way to go with that. 
So the last thing I want to show you is how this plays out across the other parts of Power Platform because it's exactly the same construct. Remember, we're building all of these different assets, whether it's an app or a flow or a business process flow or a chatbot, you're putting all of these things into an environment. So if I go across to Power Automate here, you'll see drop down list of environments there. So we've got our Power Platform COE and the dev test production. So again, just make sure whatever you're doing here, if you mean to be in the same environment that you have chosen it from that menu and Power Virtual Agents, which is the part of the platform that allows you to build a chatbot with no code. You'll see here, as soon as I give my uh, chat bot a name, it asks me to select a language and it also asks me to select an environment. So we've got those same things there. So if you've got a chatbot, for instance, that needs to reach into your Dynamics 365 uh, CRM system, for instance, there'll be an environment for that and you want to build your chatbot in the same environment where that data table is and where those data tables are. So again, just uh, be mindful of that when you do that. One other thing is that to create a new environment back in the Power Platform Admin Center here again, if you have a look at this resources menu and go into capacity, it'll tell you how much spare capacity you have. You need to make sure you've got one gigabyte of spare capacity if you want to create a new production environment. You can actually have multiple production environments as long as you've got enough spare capacity in there. So there you have it, environments in Power Platform. You have got trial environments, developer environments, also known as the community platform. We have got the default environment, which has its own special properties. Don't forget, rename that one as uh, personal productivity and use it accordingly. And then our full environments, sandbox and production environments. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see a bunch of other tips and tricks and tutorials about Dynamics 365, Power Platform and Microsoft Teams, please hit that subscribe button and keep watching. Thank you.